Welcome everybody to this episode where you can tell I'm not in Belgium, or you might not be able to tell actually, I'm parked on my drive, it's a cloudy day in February and what I'm going to do in this episode is do a full breakdown of what we spent and what my trip to Belgium actually cost. For those of you who are new to my channel, I spent um, New Year in Belgium for 12 days and I didn't just travel the northern cities, I actually went into the south of Belgium as well. So I did what are known as the areas of Flanders and also the areas of Wallonia. So I'll go through um, today and I will start with how we actually got to Belgium. Now, if any of you have never been to Europe before, I take the Euro Tunnel. Um, I am limited with the amount of time that I can get off work. So in this case, I had uh, two weeks over Christmas and New Year. Um, most times we get to the tunnel, we tend to get an earlier um, train, which then adds a couple of hours to our holiday rather than having to wait around for the ferry. Um, saying that, I haven't been on the ferry for probably over 20 years, so it might have changed. And I'm not saying that I won't ever get the ferry again, but for me, <clears throat> the 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 transport method to get to Europe of choice is, is definitely the Euro Tunnel. Now, a lane is three metres high and <clears throat> that isn't a, it doesn't cause a problem because I'll put the link to the video of me getting onto the Euro Tunnel the first time I went on last, um, last September to France. It's easy to drive on, you park up, by the time you've had your lunch, it's time to drive off. So similar to France, um, when you go to Belgium, you do need the um, headlight dip, uh, dippers, I can't remember what, um, these, the headlamp beam converters, that's the technical term, um, not the dippers. Um, so I tend to put them on on the tunnel. Um, the instructions that come with them are really self-explanatory um, of, of which direction to put them in. So, and that's for when you're driving at night. Um, so I got those from Amazon. I think they're about five, five pounds. So before you've even gone to Belgium, um, you need to pay for the beam converters, pay for the transport on the tunnel or the ferry. And the other thing um, is really handy to do, particularly if you're visiting the cities, um, is register for the low emission zones, um, LEZs. You can do that through the official websites. It's for my van on a 15 plate. It was free. Um, and you don't need stickers. You don't get anything for the window. It's not like a critter in, in France. Um, but you do have to register your license plate and then that's done for life. The low emission cities are Ghent, Brussels and Antwerp. So the Euro Tunnel, let's talk the Euro Tunnel. Yes, it's pricey. Yes, the prices have gone up. Um, my parents had frequent traveller tickets pre-pandemic um, and it doesn't look like Euro Tunnel are bringing those back. Um, but what I do is I book via the Camping and Caravan Club or the Motorhome and, and Caravan Club and you do get 10% discount on the price. So for me, I got the tunnel at, um, I'd originally booked it for 7.20 on Boxing Day the 26th of December. Um, and actually because we didn't get much sleep, I managed to bring that train forward. So we actually got the 5.50 train. And um, that meant we were in France for 7.20, not because it takes an hour and a half, but because of the time difference. So that gave us a little bit of extra time to then be able to get to Bruges, which was our first destination. It was about an hour and a half drive away from, from Calais, um, Eurotunnel exit. Could you try again? Apologies, it's Siri, trying a third wheel. And the cost of that for a return crossing, going out on the 26th of December and coming back on the 7th of January um, was £294 return. So let's talk driving in Belgium. Um, the roads are toll free, which is a great saver compared to France. When I go to France, I don't tend to drive on the toll roads unless I need to get somewhere. That's a long way um, and I just want to save myself a couple of hours. Then I will do that, but I factor that cost in. You don't need to do that with Belgium. There is no toll roads. Um, <clears throat> and we did a lot of a, a lot of city driving as well. So um we did a total of 550 miles um, from Calais back round to Calais. The cost of diesel when I was filling up um, was €1.67. So the total cost of diesel for the whole trip was €177 Euro or £151. Now, um, Belgium's a small country, but don't let that put you off, okay? 
the cities are so easily accessible. They're all approximately 30 or 40 minutes away from each other. Now, for me, um, I had originally planned on staying in the different cities. I'd found the airs. I knew where I was going to stay, but actually when we got there and I had the trouble with the water pump, we'd found the great campsite at Ghent, Urban Gardens. It was slightly more expensive than I normally like to pay, but it had the shower facilities, it had, you know, the, the washing area, and it just made life so much easier for us to actually get the bus to the train station and then get the train. Now, I know that's a little bit cheating, but I'm not, I'm not bothered. You know, it was still a motorhome holiday. We still came home to the van every day. Uh, we had a great pitch there. Cities are cities and they're no different in Belgium. I had this in France when I was driving around tours. You know, they, they can be a little bit intimidating, particularly if um, your sat-nav takes you somewhere that you weren't expecting. Or actually what I normally do is ignore the sat-nav and take the wrong turn in. The, bit, the roads are busy in the cities, but the country driving is lovely. It's very similar to France. So throughout this video, I will put links up here um, for you to watch all of the videos from around the trip. And I will now put a video in to show you the route that we took. So we originally we started off in Bruges and then we moved on to Ghent. We then got the train over to Brussels and the day after that we then got the train up to Antwerp. Those journeys took about 30 to 40 minutes and were very reasonably priced. We spent New Year's Eve in Ghent, we had quite a, a nice day, we had a relaxing morning and then on the evening we went into Ghent for New Year's Eve. We were up very early on New Year's Day um, because I'd gone to bed early after too many Belgian beers. Um, so it gave us a chance to miss all the traffic, however you do need to factor in being able to do things like shopping and fuel. So New Year's Day, um, obviously shopping was an issue because a lot of the shops were closed, however a lot of the petrol stations in Belgium are self-serve, so you can actually pay by card, you don't need anybody there um, to be able to pay and it's worth looking for those. Um, LPG filling in Belgium, it, it's it's easily it's easily accessible. Um, I've got a gas slow system, so I didn't actually have to top up whilst I was there. It, I've got an eleven um, kilogram bottle, and and that did me for the entire trip. Now, because probably we were on campsites the most of the time, so I relied on hookup uh, for heating, for fridge. Whereas normally on the airs, I would rely on the gas. After we travelled around the north, and, and like I said, a lot of miles were saved because we got the train, we headed down um, to Hu and Dubu, and we spent that night um, in hans -Sules. So we did quite a lot of the driving in that day. Now that drive from Ghent down to um, Hu and Dubu was about two hours, and then each of those were about half an hour distance, and it was very much country driving. Um, I had a little bit of a wobble in Dubu where... Um, it was very a really tight junction. The search for sites, parking spot, I just couldn't get near. It was it was almost 180 um, turning, and that's not going to happen in a 7.3 meter van. So, it probably great for camper vans. As I got into the city, it got really narrow, and I did have a wobble, um, but I carried on driving. And about half a mile outside of the city, I did get parked up. Now. That was the most expensive parking I paid for in Belgium. It was 14 euro. And there was no overnight camping allowed. So when I'm travelling over uh, overseas, the first thing I do is I have an idea in my head of my route and, I'm, and as part of that, I've done a little bit of research on all the different stopovers and the sites that I mainly rely on is Park for Night and actually for Belgium, Search for Sites was better because I know that Park for Night, it can be really reliable in France. I found um, Search for Sites was better for Belgium. As I've said, John's the navigator. He likes a real book. So I always invest in the All the Airs books um, from Vicarious Media. Now, it's actually just a much smaller edition for um, Belgium. And Belgium, it's also Luxembourg and the Netherlands. So you get a little map and you get a small book as well. Whereas for France, if anybody's got the books, you get two massive big books. It does look like in this um, All the Airs book that some of them haven't been um, reviewed since 2016. So I would always definitely recommend doing a little quick search as well of Park for Night or search for sites to make sure the air actually still is there. 
The other book that I invested in from Vicarious Media was um, a book called The Great War Road Trip Europe. Now, I didn't follow the entire route because they give two routes, um, but I did get a lot of inspiration for particularly the war cemeteries and where to park because this isn't just about where to go it actually has the map references as well for the airs so that's really useful and it's got two main routes in it um one covers a lot of um france germany and belgium um so really it was a fiver i mean you know it's it, it's not a big book, but it, well worth it, in my opinion. I also rely on travel books. Again, we're, we're quite traditional. We do like books. Um, my parents gave me a map that they had from years ago. They, my parents are motorhomers, um, probably where I've been influenced. Um, so they have also lent me things. Um, I got books from the local library. It's really useful just to have those as backup because if you are going somewhere, it's it's worthwhile just looking. Is that going to be me for me? You know, we do we do a lot of things, and it's not for everybody. Um, but I like to have, just have an idea of what I'm going to look for and be well informed when I get there. The other thing I do tend to do is when I get to a city or a town, um, I also go to the tourist information office. These, you know, you can pick them up. Um, not just there, you can pick them up at services. We don't tend to go to the services or the airs on the motorway. Um, but the the definitely the the tourist information office in Ghent was amazing. Really helpful there. Um, English, well spoken, not you know not a problem. Help really helps us with the trains, um, and that's where we did get a lot of our um, information for the rest of our trip, such as the the Grotz de Han. I mean, I'd researched and found that the the caves at Dinant were closed, and I was absolutely gutted. Um, never heard of Grotz before we got there, and actually it turned out to be one of my favourite days of the holiday. So really useful. Um, I obviously use the internet to do research as well, but one of my favourite ways of gathering information is from the locals, just, you know, chatting to people. Um, the first night in Bruges, we went into a tiny little bar, which I can highly recommend. Um, they do a, a tapas board um, of, of beer and, you know, you're going to be staggering out after that. But we got chatting to this wonderful Belgian couple. And they spoke very little English and we don't speak much Dutch because in the north of Belgium, they do speak Dutch. In the south, they speak French, which I'm fine with. Um, but in the north, you know, that we, we had a, we had a conversation despite the fact that neither of us spoke each other's languages um, by using things like Google Translate, um, you know, but it was it was really good. And they gave us some really good recommendations of places to go, particularly the beer houses. And finally, the other inspiration that I find is by watching people like me you know I watch a lot of YouTube I've, I, I very rarely watch TV anymore and um, I love watching YouTube channels where they have tours um, and that you know that you travel with them um, so I use a lot of YouTube videos to, to to look at where you know places for inspiration but the other thing is Instagram and Facebook you know there's some great groups and Instagram's got some brilliant um, influencers or actually I follow loads of people and I've got some really good inspiration from them. So the next part I'm going to come on to is camping and Stellplatz, overnights and airs. Okay, this is where for us it was an unexpected cost. So the issue we had with the water pump, when I got back I researched it. I'd done a lot of research while we were out there. It was actually just the strainer. Um, but instead of just replacing the strainer, my pump had been struggling for a while. I could tell with the water pressure. I've put a new strainer on, I've put a new pump on, I've kept the other pump um, and I've bought a new strainer just so in case it happens again I've got a backup. Um, so yeah, the campsites and Stellplatz were a little bit more than we'd anticipated. We spent £220 over the 12 days um, because of that. And, and I wouldn't have expected to spend that much had we been staying on the airs if we'd have had a shower and washing up facilities. The airs we stayed on varied from um, €10 Euros at Sefontaine. Um, that was the one that we used from going from Hans back up to Ypres because that would have been a three hour drive and we just split it up. So we did an hour and a half and then an hour and a half. Now, Sir Fontaine is on the edge of the Ardennes. It's a great air for views. We were we were at one of two vans there that night 
and the views were spectacular when we woke up in the morning and um, the little town nearby you can get some shopping so so that was 10 euros and um, the most we paid was 30 euros a night at urban uh, urban gardens in ghent but we paid that purely for facilities and location I've told a lie. The cheapest air we stayed on technically wasn't in Belgium. It was Gravelines, which I think is just on the border. And um, that was four euros for 24 hours. So the next bit is about the transport, because let's be honest, I did I did choose to get the trains into the city centres and I am so glad I did now. It gave me a chance to, for example, Brussels. I saw the air of the suggested park up at Mini Europe. I would have quite happily driven there, that that was fine. But actually, in the end, it turned out better for me to get the trains. So um, I've done a breakdown of the trains, I'll do them here. Um, for example, the return train from Brussels, which was the double decker that I got super excited about for the two adults, was 18 euro. So if you do a cost comparison in terms of fuel, and, and just the stress, it was just the best option. It, re we, it really was. We got to chill out. And actually on the way back, we stopped at the local supermarket in the train station, grabbed some beers and just chilled on the way. So that was really nice. We got travel passes in um, Brussels, but not Antwerp, so, because you didn't need them. Antwerp's easy to walk around. Brussels was different and that cost us €14. Euro. And the return train from Antwerp was 19 euro. So again, I, I was quite happy paying those prices for, for not having to drive. You did have to get the bus, um, not the shuttle bus. So if you got the shuttle bus from the campsite in Ghent, into Ghent, it was free. However, if you got the bus to the train station, which was about a mile and a half away from the centre of Ghent, um, you did have to pay. And it was tap. You just use, I use Apple Pay. Um, you can use your card. And I, that was £6.45 for two return journeys. So again, um, it was absolutely fine. It's the number 19. Make sure you get on the right number 19. Um, on our first day coming back from Brussels, we got on the wrong direction and we ended up at the football stadium, not not the, the place where the campsite is. And for anybody, if you Google Maps it, you'll see they're quite a distance away. So that journey actually took us about 50 minutes when it should have only took 10 but um, the, the free shuttle bus from Ghent is, is an absolute dream. It drops you right in the city centre and you're about a five minute walk then from Gravenstein. And of course, we can't forget my little episode on Bolt the Scooter at Dinant. That was the best £6.50 I have spent. I really enjoyed that. And I know my dad will tell me off because I didn't have a helmet on, um, but I just saw parts of Dinant that, you know, because of the fact that we were a day behind, I just wanted to do a rapid, you know, a rapid, um, a rapid visit. And that's exactly what I got from hiring that scooter. Um, I would definitely hire them again. They they are great fun um, and they just get you around. You know, you get to see so much more at in such a, a shorter amount of time. The best thing about them is you can pick them up and drop them off all over places. You download the app and it tells you in a little dot where the nearest scooter is and what charge it's got. So altogether for transport, we spent 65 pounds and seven pence. Next, I'll talk about eating out. Now we have a motorhome with a kitchen. I'll be honest, we don't tend to eat out a lot. Um, for us, it's probably more drinks. We, we do, you know, go for quite a few beers but I'm happy to come back to the van and, and cook but because it was Christmas we'd got loads of biscuits like cheese board biscuits so we put them in the van um, and then of course you know the, the baguettes you know on an evening it was so easy just to do what I call a picky tea um, with cheese and meats from the local supermarkets so I'll put some photos up of the type of things we had. We had camembert one night, it was absolutely delicious. I'd taken some onion chutney with us, so we were fine with that. Um, but you, you aren't supposed to take your cheese um, or dairy and meat products with you on the tunnel. Um, and I think that's the same for, for the ferry. You're not allowed to take them from the UK. Um, I've never seen anybody be checked. Um, but it's just something we just don't risk. We take a lot of dried things. We take things in tins. Um, and then the supermarkets are great over there. And of course, the supermarkets in Belgium are exactly the same as France. Um, we use Carrefour a lot. We use Carrefour in France. So it's it's really easy. So eating out. Technically, we actually only ate out once. Um, we had lots of... So we tried frites in um, Ghent. Um, we had tapas in Bruges. 
um but our probably our meal that we had out was one night in Hansules where we had a Chinese and it was good but I had three glasses of wine John had two large beers and this is what a high end up looking like after three glasses of wine and a Chinese that cost 48 euros but I think for three drink well for five drinks and and a main course Chinese meal I thought that was really reasonable and it was really nice as well and instead of eating out, we do still buy locally. So we don't eat out. We tend to take away in. So we do buy um, takeaways from the local towns and villages and, and eat them in the van just because me and John eat at different times. So that just works for us. During the day, um, we took pat lunches and um, like with the grot, Grotz de Han, it was over 70 quid. So actually, you know, we've got to think about the budget. We're, we're, we're not, you know, we're not loaded. Um, so I did take a packed lunch with us that day. We do always take like bottles of water and drinks with us. Um, so that's that's how we weigh it up. We, we do spend locally. We spend in the supermarkets. Um, but to allow us to then go and do what we like to do, which is going out and, and seeing places for the day. You know, that's how we balance it up. A lot of the places as well we visit are free. So the cathedrals, the churches, some of the museums in town, they're all free. And that's really what you've got to do to be able to budget these kind of trips. So the entertainment, the trips, the days out, okay. We did spend over 225 pounds, but we had some amazing days. Um, for example, in, in Bruges, we went to the Beer Museum, we went to the Freak Museum, we had the Boat River Cruise, uh, we went up the Belfry. The Belfry itself was €28 Euros for, two, for two tickets. Um, we went to Gravenstein in Ghent, which I would definitely recommend. This, this, I, I've read some of the TripAdvisor reviews and they have a bit of a grumble, but I really enjoyed it. Um, I thought the audio guide was hilarious. Um, we did Mini Europe in, in Brussels. Um, the Atomium at the time was partially closed for refurbishment, so we just chose to do Mini Europe at the Citadel in Dinant, um, and of course the Grotz at, at Vahan. Um, we did the Animal Park as well. I don't know if you've seen the video. Um, and that's really what the cost was. So let's look at other. And I think next time what I'll do is I'll keep a spreadsheet because I um, we tend to take um, our I have a, a Clarity credit card through the Halifax, so it's easy to track what we're spending. But I think actually we probably just need to be a little bit more, you know, on it. Um, we take a little bit of cash, but we said we're going to do that less and less because a lot of the places you go now are, are, are card only. Um, so other, what did we spend money on other than food, drink, camping, diesel, transport? Well, of course, I had my wonderful trip to the laundrette. So the laundrette was two washers and um, three tumble dryers to get everything dried. It took me an hour and a half and it was 16 euro. Now, one thing I've not done is include the cost of the motorhome in this. Now, I um, was a business lecturer and what when I was teaching students accounting, I would always say, you know, you've got your fixed costs, you've got your variable costs. The motorhome for me is a fixed cost, you know, I'm paying for it anyway. So actually, when I look at the cost of a trip, I just look at what the actual trip has cost me. So in this case, Belgium cost me £1,435.08. It's the perfect place to do a Christmas and New Year trip. It really is. It feels so magical. All the towns you go in to have Christmas markets, and I'm not, I'm not exaggerating when I say that. Even the small towns like Who on New Year's Day, you could tell it was, it felt like a town in a hangover. It was just, it was just wonderful. It really does feel, um, just magical. It really does. It's got such a brilliant spirit. And if you've got twelve days, that is more than enough time to have a great trip around Belgium. I expect with another two weeks, we would have seen much more, but I feel that we saw enough of what we needed to see. And we also finished the end of the trip going back up to the seaside. So I was happy. I just disappointed I didn't bring my bodyboard because I could have joined the surfers on, on, you know, the waves were there. So, but yeah, all in all, a really, really good trip. If you've got any questions at all, drop them into the comments and I will respond. I work full time, okay? So if I don't respond immediately, I will get back to you. Uh, within a couple of days but really really consider this as a as a an alternative to France because we were not disappointed